Um, the next person up would be um, Andrew Cunningham, um, Chief Executive Officer for Walkabout um, Resources. Honourable Minister Mavunde, Honourable Ministers, distinguished guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, a lot of Tanzanian friends I see you in the audience today. Um, it's good to, to share a stage with the Minister for the first time uh, as we showcase uh, Tanzania as a country and, and the quality of the resources in Tanzania. Um, I'll start the presentation by uh, something that I heard recently in, in a, a talk in, in Europe where they were talking about uh, where all the minerals are going to come from, uh, diversifying their supply to not be so China dependent, who's dominating certainly in the industrial or the uh, critical mineral space. Uh, and the number is 81 out of 16,000. Now, what does that mean? That means 81 out of 16,000 projects are successful or ever developed. So <clears throat> it, it shows you uh, what a high risk game this is. Uh, the exploration industry especially, and, and what it takes to, to get a mine developed. Um, the, the topic of my talk is delivering on promises, and this, this came from something that was said a couple of years ago when a colleague of mine, I think, is in the audience here today. We were in Melbourne, uh, cap in hand, begging for money uh, to get the project, uh, the next stage of the project developed, um, and we presented to one of the brokers there, and this lady said, guys, I must give it to you. You guys always do what you said you were going to do. And that's something that the company has tried to stick to, um, is, you know, the, the money needs to be spent on, in the ground, and you need to spend it on what you told your shareholders and your stakeholders that you're going to be spending it on. Uh, the disclaimer, I don't know where to point this thing. Right, the, what's the company about? The, the geology underlies everything. I'm a geologist, so I'll probably mention this 56 times in the next 15 minutes. But without a quality resource, we wouldn't have been where we are today. We are not an explorer, we are not a developer, we are now a, a producer. Uh, we've gone, it's been, a, it's been a very long journey and I'll take you through that. Uh, it's all about the quality of the, of the resource, the ex-China supply of graphite into the Western world. Uh, it's got the highest reserve grade of any uh, now developed project in, in, on the African continent. That's the quality of the product that we, that we produce and sell into the international market. Uh, and it's uh, what we uh, believed is the right scale for where we are in Africa and for the commodity that we are in. Uh, why graphite? Why would one be in graphite and why now? Um, it's highly publicized, the demand for graphite, what, how it needs to grow over the next 10 years. Uh, there's various slides that have, um, various companies have been sharing over the past uh, few years. One of them that sticks to mind is that in the next 10 years, another 96 mines of the size of Lindy Jumbo in Tanzania need to come into the market to be able to supply the demand for graphite. Um, and as far as I'm aware, where there are two companies that are now that have been in development over the past uh, few years, uh, one in Madagascar, and, and these are listed companies, uh, and one in Tanzania. Uh, there's certainly going to be a big gap uh, between demand and supply. The the price of graphite, uh, that top uh, right graph there, just shows you the differences in pricing. That's uh, that's opened up over the past few months between selling graphite into the Western world and selling graphite into China, or what graphite is sold as in China. Um, and I can stand here and say these are real numbers. We are selling graphite, and we're selling graphite into the Western world as well, uh, and those numbers are real. So what, is, what, is, uh, what are we selling? What, is, what makes our project different? Uh, first of all, I've spoken about the, the high grade of the project. Not any two graphite projects are the same. Uh, last year, I had a, uh, quite a bit to say about the quality of Tanzanian graphite, and that hasn't changed. Uh, Tanzanian graphite is very good, probably the best in the world. Um, but our deposit, again, is very different to many of the others out there. Uh, we will be producing, and we are producing, predominantly large flake. Uh, that goes sells at a premium. It, uh, the small flake uh, 
uh, gets predominantly used in the, uh, the EV market and energy storage and the batteries that everybody knows about. Uh, but it's the larger flakes which attract uh, a premium price, and that's where our focus is. And, and uh, there's a whole list of things where it gets used in uh, uh, graphite is an extremely interesting commodity, probably one of the most interesting commodities I've ever worked in. Uh, and the uses of graphite is, uh, there's just so many in the world. But the one we're focusing on and the one that uh, is also showing quite a bit of growth over the next or, uh, couple of years and has shown a lot of growth is the expandable graphite market. And Tanzanian graphite is very good for that as well. So the Lindy Jumbo timeline. Look, uh, the company, how the way we've done things is, is seldom been conventional. Uh, it's been very difficult and at sometimes pretty ugly. Uh, but we, we stuck to our guns, our uh, philosophy and our strategy has never changed. Um, we, we went through the ups and downs of the, of the industry. Uh, you'll see there, I've got a little bracket around COVID and there's a year or two missing there, but I think there's a year or two missing of, out of all our lives. But Tanzania just carried on through the COVID pandemic. Uh, I was fortunate enough that I live now back in, in, in Africa uh, and could get to Tanzania and we just soldiered on. Uh, we, we, uh, during that period, we started uh, shipping some of our, our product or our, our equipment to, to Tanzania. Uh, we were busy with our uh, early works on the ground in Tanzania. Uh, and that's um, when we started this old graphite story. We weren't first in, in Tanzania. We weren't first in graphite. We certainly, uh, we were probably lost, but we've certainly leapfrogged all of our, our peers out there, and we're probably a couple of years ahead of them now. Um, this year, we, we started our commissioning. Uh, in May, we bagged our first product, and in July, we exported our first product, uh, which went to Europe. Uh, so we, we're in a pretty good space. Uh, we now with the ramp up period, uh, next step is to get the throughput uh, in the plant uh, up to nameplate capacity. We're probably running at 50% of that now. Uh, so we've, we've done our first sales as we wanted to. Uh, the recoveries are pretty good, much better than what we've anticipated and that we've got in our financial model. Uh, and now we start to focus on the purity and the, the, um, the flake size distribution. Uh, of our final product. Uh, as I said, this is where it all starts, the geology and the mining. We've always saw this as the lowest risk area of the project. The, the, the resource is uh, boringly predictable. Uh, you can see there where I've uh, delineated the main ore zone. The dip is in the right direction. Remember when we came there, there's no outcrop, so it's pretty nice to see that things are actually panning out the way we had it in the model. Uh, the Mining at the moment is showing us that there's a 40% a increase, a 47% increase in grade from the resource block model uh, and to what we actually delivering to the ROM pad. You can see there in the uh, top end of the picture, the northern end, uh, there's a bunch of trenches. That's our grade control over uh, the, the mining blocks. Uh, and then uh, the, the contained graphite that we're delivering to the ROM pad is 50% more than in the resource model. We've obviously got updated models before we do our, our mine plans and so forth. Uh, processing, uh, that's, that's going pretty well. We've obviously uh, gone through a, a, quite a lengthy period of commissioning and into ramp up. Um, we've just announced this morning is that uh, at, uh, in, in, in uh, August we, we produced one day, we produced 94 bags of graphite a day. What's significant about that is that nameplate capacity is 110 bags a day. That's 110 tons a day. Uh, <clears throat> we're doing this by, with a, a feed rate which is 50% below capacity at the moment and we're already at uh, 90, 94 bags a day of, of production. And uh, I must say, since, since uh, I did this presentation and in the beginning of this month, which is uh, two, three days ago, we've again produced more than, than 90 bags a day and that's becoming a more regular occurrence. So it, it's going pretty well. The, the, as I said, the recoveries are much higher than what we, we anticipated, uh, which, is, which is very good for the project. Uh, and all attention will now go to, to the purity of the, project, of the product. That doesn't say we're not producing uh, graphite at purity. We're producing anything between 92 and 96% uh, total graphitic carbon. Uh, but it's now just to get that 
uh, constant uh, throughout all the products that we that we are producing. Uh, there's a tendency that the the finer graphite uh, that that gets produced at at Lindy Jumbo is is often lower grade than the than the larger flakes, but that's not really a problem because as you saw in the previous slides, that's 12% uh, of our revenue. Uh, and there's a high demand for this. We, we're actively seeing this in the market where uh, people are, are knocking on our doors virtually every day, uh, can you sell us graphite? So the sales, where are we? Uh, as I said, the first shipment went to Europe in, in July. Since then, there's been various shipments to, to Asia, and now we're starting to export uh, to China as well. Uh, and the sales prices, which everybody's uh, been speculating about, people are comparing uh, graphite to whatever's produced in, in China. Uh, for the fine graphite, it's anything between $500 a ton and $750 a ton, depending where it goes. Uh, Lindy Jumbo Fines is obviously different to the norm again. We, we produce a minus 80 mesh product, which is minus 80, 180 microns. Uh, for the larger flakes, and that's for the plus 80 and plus 50 mesh, and that's for 94 to 96% purity, uh, between $1,000 a ton and or $1,060 a ton and $1,600 a ton. Now, these are real prices. These are prices that I deal with on a, on a daily basis, and this is what the market has been wanting to see. What are we actually selling our graphite um, at to the market? You can see there's a, there's a big difference between uh, graphite sold to, to China and graphite to the Western world, and, and we, we're actively seeing that at the moment. Uh, the minister has spoken about uh, downstream or uh, further beneficiating of graphite. Uh, we, as a company, we deliberately focused on what we know, and that's producing or that is developing a, a graphite mine. We didn't uh, diversify our attention to look at the downstream opportunities while we were developing this, this uh, unique deposit. But all of that's available to us now, and we certainly are kicking off some of our studies into, into the downstream uh, opportunities out there. We are not resource bound. This is a, we've got a life of mine of 24 years, uh, at, uh, and that's based on only a small portion of our measured and indicated resources. There's enough graphite around us, uh, even uh, on, on the mining license that we have, uh, to probably double that life of mine. Uh, there's also, uh, we're going to have a low-grade stockpile of between 6 and 8%. Uh, that's uh, normally what our peer group is going to have as their ROM feed. Uh, we have that as our low-grade stockpile, and that we can develop as well. Uh, and we've also got, uh, as I said, the downstream opportunities. All those are open to us now, and we have started with, with looking into that. Uh, these are just a couple of photos that I that I showed, and uh, you can see the rapid progress uh, over the over the past year, September last year. That's what it looked like in in January, uh, and a month or so ago, uh, operating uh, 24 hours. We we've got grid power. The minister spoke about the infrastructure. Uh, Jeff spoke about it as well. I can just reiterate what they said. We have full grid power on site. We've got the backup generators there. If if uh, uh, the power may go down. It's been extremely stable. I don't think we've run those generators for more than probably five hours in total since we've started. And uh, we've got a, a very good relationship with, with Tanesco, who informs us when they're gonna go down. So we can, we can preempt and, and use those periods for maintenance or, or to run the generators. Uh, the TSF, uh, that is going very well. Uh, we, that's been commissioned. This was taken in, in, in April and obviously not a lot of material in there yet. It's looking slightly different now with lift one in, in progress. Um, and what I, what I didn't mention is that we, we won't have waste dumps on the mine. All the waste rock has been used in the, in the tailing storage facility uh, to build the various lift. It is a line facility. Uh, we've, we've deliberately done that for the worst case scenario to avoid any contamination of the, of the environment. Uh, this is just part of the construction, the burner, the flotation going well. Uh, you can see how graphite floats there. It's very hydrophobic. It doesn't want to be. It floats very easy. It doesn't want to be in water. Uh, as you can see on the spiral classifier, um, this is a, one of the rougher flotation cells uh, just after one of the, the shutdowns. You can see the amount of graphite in these cells. And this is not coal, ladies and gentlemen. This is high-grade graphite sitting on our final stockpile. Um, we are blessed to have the resource that we have, uh, and it's evidence that we are the only graphite company in the Western world that has secured debt funding to get this project up and running. 
uh, and there's just the resource statement or the, the or reserve statement and the mineral resource statement. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I look forward to sharing it.